Putting this engine in that abomination over there. Um, what have we done so far, James? So far, we've <coughs> taken off the front panel, started removing some of the wiring, some of the little bits, but I think there's a long way to go now. There's a lot more to take out. Okay, so we've just had lunch. Um, we have made progress so far. The block is pretty much disconnected from the car, apart from a couple of little bits that we can't get to. Uh, got the air con, uh, which is all wired in around the back. Start motor is down there somewhere, which we're going to have to get from underneath. And then we've got gear linkages, which are being a bit, bit stiff. But all the hoses, all the plugs, all the wires, um, they're all off. And we've started labelling stuff up as well, so we know, we know what's what. Luckily, we have a 4x4 with a stock 1.2 engine in it, and a 100 horsepower with a stock 1.4 engine in it. So that's going to be what we are basing all of our work off of. Um, so if we do get stuck or we can't find where something goes, then, then we'll have those to look at. Um, next job is... This is the main loom that goes to the engine bay. Splits in two here, and then it disappears off into the car. In there, the camera's going to wake up. There we go. So we need to get whatever this is attached to out this way, so we can switch the whole loom over with the engine. So that's going to be the easiest way to avoid problems, I think. Which means that we are now onto. Interior. So steering wheel off, dash out, um, fuse box and body computer is all down there. And then once all this is out, we'll know where we are with the wiring. Update. The dash is gone. 
it was not too bad to get out. No, lots of hidden bolts, but apart from that, it came out with relative ease. But yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, there wasn't actually that many hidden bolts though, was there? There are a couple, a couple of sneaky ones it's here just, and there. At the back mainly, it's just clips holding it in. So it's once you've got the front bolts out, it just pulls out. So. Um, yeah. So yeah, not too bad at all. So now we can access all the wiring, hopefully. Yeah. And take what <laughs> we need out. Uh, we are not going to be using the climate control, are we? No. No. no too complicated. So that's staying here. Uh, what we do need is all of this govins down here. And that's about it, I think. And the loom. There's the dash. So there was bolt here, bolt here, uh, two bolts here, there was one there, uh, there was one here, one here, big one there, big one there, uh, big one here, and then underneath, so this will be in the foot wells, one there, one there, and then I think that was it. Obviously you've got to take the stereo, airbag, glove box, steering wheel, clocks, all of that bullshit out. Um, but yeah, not too bad as far as dashes go. Right, we are investigating wires. So far we've got uh, engine loom, where is it? That's coming from the bulkhead. That goes underneath the car, this one. And it goes all the way down here to the fuse box and the body computer. And then none of this bollocks is to do with the engine room, so we've had two of that. Down this side. Engine room comes out there. And then splits into all of this. Until we end up with this. Whatever this is, we're just tracing that back. Yeah, it's We're thinking it's the fuel pump. I think it might not. That seems oh, to be the thinking? fuel wiring, and this little one goes out the floor pan underneath the car somewhere. Maybe, yes, maybe? Maybe. Could well be. Let's have a look underneath. Welcome back. You join us at our first big challenge. There is a, a rubber bung that holds the loom as it goes through the bulkhead. Uh, this, I don't know if you can see that, this bung, we've managed to remove it from the bulkhead, but trying to get it back through this way with the loom is proven to be quite difficult. And obviously we can't take the loom out until that's come with it. And then we have to do all this again when we get to the other car. Right, welcome back. It's taken us maybe, how long has it taken us James? About an hour to get to this point? I'd say about two or three. All right, maybe two or three hours to get, this is the bung that was in the, blo in the bulkhead. That's the bit that went off the passenger side. And then all of this has been fed inch by inch through the bulkhead and through this tiny little space that James is using a, a bike BB tool to try to hook it all out and then I've got my hand buried deep in the car fisting it trying to get all this wiring out we're on the last section which is the main plugs that go into the body computer which is the biggest bit so we're just trying to get some very big things through a very small hole but we're getting there Yeah, 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 is that it? Got it! Ah! <laughs> but how many did we snap on the way out? I don't know. <laughs> the dog's celebrating too. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, there it is, guys. One panda engine loom. <laughs> Everything we need to make warp speed happen. Oh, yeah. Good morning everyone. Uh, day three of the 
100 horsepower 4x4. We're about to bring this up onto the road so we can take the engine out and uh, get it up on stands because my driveway is a massive slope. So we can... Uh, I need some big players. Oh, <laughs> exciting update. I know. <laughs> and the most interesting panda news here. Yeah. The lever for the uh, the jack doesn't fit the release, so can't actually wear it. Right. But this well. is the big news. This engine is no longer attached to this car, apart from by its drive shaft. So what we're doing is trying to move the engine out to give us access to the whole circumference of the drive shaft, so we can lever them out properly. Because there's not a lot of room in this bay. So it's going to come forward a bit, then we pop the drive shafts, hopefully. Yep, we will. And then the whole thing will be out. Yeah, it'll work. <laughs> Truth, drive shafts are free. Last thing to be attached is the brake right. booster. Yeah, we'll get it out in a minute. <laughs> is it not easier to take it off the engine then? Uh, no, that was a nightmare. <laughs> there we go. Are we free? We're free. I will stay here and make sure we are free because there's always a chance we missed the. Uh, wire or something. I also want to film the moment of truth when yeah, engine right. leaves car. I got this. Just go slowly and if you see it getting caught up anywhere. Okay, you're going to foul on the wheel arch liner, but that's not a problem. If you just drag that, it'll probably ping off. Yeah. You wrap it over the boom. Keep it out of the way. Stuck on something. Arch liner. Just it a bit. That drive shaft's not completely free yet, over. Oh. Get the cat plan underneath this.
never satisfied. <laughs> So this old car's on some spare wheels and we'll be sending the bits off it. Uh, by the time everyone watches this video, it will be gone, it will be crushed. So don't bother asking us for parts, but um, yeah, all the bits off this will be sold. And these will be going on eBay at some point. Good morning everyone, welcome back to part three is it? I think it's part three. Part three yeah. of the 4x4 four four 100 horsepower. Uh, today's job is to finish it basically. Um, engine out of there, sort this engine out to get it ready to go in. So we've got a new clutch, new belts. Uh, what else we got? Water pump. Water pump. Uh, oil filter, spark plugs, yep. basically proper full service stuff. Um, and then, so that's the first job, is to prepare this engine. And then we'll start taking this one apart. James has very bravely driven to my house. Yeah. Uh, in full knowledge that once we start dismantling his car, he's got no way home. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we have a long Easter weekend, a uh, four day weekend, to try and get this, this finished and running. Yeah. And if we don't, then it's going to be a long cab ride and I'm going to have to store another panda on my driveway <laughs> to go with the, the many pandas I already have. Um, so yeah, so we're going to start with clutch and belts and all that jazz and yeah. uh, hopefully it'll all go smoothly. It should be a bit smoother getting the, the 1.2 out than it was getting the 1.4 out because we know what we're doing now. Uh, yeah. We did a lot of learning last time. Bit of practice <laughs> last time. Yeah, so uh, right, let's get cracking. Gearbox removed. Old clutch. New clutch, all fitted. Hopefully it's straight. We'll find out at the worst possible moment if it's not straight. Uh, so this just needs belts, which we'll do next. And then it'll be ready to start taking this apart. So we've just potentially signed this engine's death sentence. <laughs> uh, new timing belt is on, new water pump is on, which which fits. It looked a lot different inside, it had a different like, um, I guess it's an impeller is it? Impeller, yeah. yeah. it's an impeller. Yeah, also um, it's weird holes on the side. So it's a completely different design and, it, and yeah, it's got these little, what are they? These little things here, which aren't threaded or anything, so we're not sure what they're for. We'll soon find out if coolant comes pissing out of them when we turn the engine on. There's a good chance of that. Um, but yeah, so we think we've got it lined up where it was. But we'll soon find out. Even if it is out, it's not out far enough to damage anything, we don't think. so. No, it's potentially one tooth out. So yeah, maybe yeah. maybe a tooth. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Might be alright. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> have to get it on the dyno and see how much power it's making. <laughs> That's what YouTubers do when they engine swap something, isn't it? But yeah, so once that's back on, we can get the auxiliary belt on. We were going to do the uh, aircon delete, 
that a lot of people do so this is the air con compressor and it runs off of the serpentine belt but you can get rid of it and then use the shorter belt for the alternator um, but we've decided to make it easier we're just going to leave the compressor on for now yeah um, so yeah once that's on, the engine will be prepped. We've already started taking this one apart, so the front end's ready to come off. We're just going to spin it around so that when we do put the engine in, we've got enough space. Uh, and then it'll go up in the air. Wheels off, suspension off, radiator off, coolant out, and then pull the engine out the front, and then this one will be ready to go in. Yeah. So we're making good progress for day one. If we can get... I mean, there's a good chance we can get that block sat in that shell by the end of the day, I reckon. I think so. Depending on how difficult this is to get apart. We've still got, obviously, an engine and gearbox to take off here. Yeah. With all the shit that goes along with that, prop shaft and drive shafts and suspension and all that sort of stuff, so. Yeah. But we have good weather. If we can get this out today, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think the minimum is getting this out. Yeah, on, on this stuff. engine fully sorted this one out. Yeah. And then tomorrow, in, wiring, done. Yeah. Maybe. We'll try. Do you reckon it's a two day job then? Potentially. Do you reckon yeah. we're not going to need Sunday and Monday? We might need Sunday just to finish off, but I think we can get I think there's, there's almost certainly going to be a problem that we need to fix. Oh yeah. Either a coolant leak or an oil leak or, or something not running properly or a wiring problem. There's going to be something, so yeah. we need to allow for that. But that's why we've got four day weekends. So that's why we've, yeah. we've done it this weekend, so we've got time to deal with all that shit. So, cool. so yeah. Sounds good. Progress. See you in the next update. Update time. The wiring's pretty much disconnected from the body. Um, manifold is loose. We're going to cut it here because this is where the um, exhaust becomes different. And then we're going to bodge the 100 horsepower manifold and cap onto the 4x4 pipe. I know it's not big enough, but it will do for now until James can get something good to us. Yeah. Uh, so we might be losing a couple of horsepower, but it's not, not going to be a problem, is it? No, it'll be alright. Um, so we've just got to cut the manifold off, disconnect the gearbox, and then it's time to undo some mounts and to get the engine out. And then we have to take the interior apart to get to the loom, which is going to be fun. It'd be worse than the other one because there's loads of custom wiring in it that's mm. stretched all over the place. I mean, it might be a good chance to redo some of the bodged it wires. It might be, yeah. Some of them could be in there. redone. Yeah. Fire up the soldering iron and do it properly. Sounds yeah, good. That's where we're at now. The engine's ready to go in. Apart from that alternator and stuff, we've taken all that off. Quite a bit of weight. If anyone wants to do this, uh, where is it? For this, is everything we've removed, and that weighs. What do you reckon that weighs? Eight, nine kilos. Probably, yeah. I mean, we put an alternator back on, so some of that will go back on. But a lot of that weight is in the mount and the compressor. So, plus, it makes alternator changes easier in the future because you can actually get to it down this way so that's come off and then we also need to take the struts off so we can get the drive shafts out yep that'd be fun uh yeah it's getting there engine definitely out today and then tomorrow engine in we're just gonna have to put everything together and put a tarp over everything for the night aren't we yeah, <laughs> because there's no way it's gonna go back on the driveway now no. so <laughs> All we'll have to do is strap that engine to the pallets to free up the hoist. Yeah. Stop it falling over. Get the hoist out. And then we're going to do the oil change on the new engine when it's in the car because we think that'll be easier. Yeah, when the front's still off, it'll be easy to get yeah, to, won't it? Because the oil filter, if anyone doesn't know, right the front, is right here. And it's really difficult to get to when the car's in one piece because you can get to it from underneath, but trying to get enough purchase on it to twist it is sometimes difficult. So, so while, it's all, while the front end's off, we're going to do the oil change. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That'll do. The engine hoist has been freed for service. And James is currently hacking up his engine loom. 
anyone who really needs a 1.2 engine in there right now, just look away, because this might make you cry. Oh, it's tough. I didn't want to be snipped. Should we just use the grinder? Should we really savage with it? And then slip and go through the windscreen. <laughs> Please, though. I've only had the windscreen like two months. They were wondering how we solved the drive shaft issue. Uh, this is our solution. Take the boot back and pop the drive shaft out of its little hole. Because these are going back in anyway. So what we'll do is just pop it back in, reseal the boot, and then well, fill it up with grease and then reseal the boot, and it should be good. Seen a lot of chat online about 16 valve versus 8 valve manifold. This is an 8 valve. This is the 16 valve, so you can see they're completely different and they will not fit no matter what anyone tells you. So we're going to cut this there and then hopefully it will line up somewhere close to the, um, to the existing exhaust and then we'll either put a little joiner in or we'll just weld the two bits together. <laughs> and enjoy your new life. The worst engine I've ever had. You will never plague anyone with your underpowered shit again. <laughs> <laughs> right, that was pretty tidy about, didn't it? Surprisingly, yeah. yeah. So, show everybody how much more simple the auxiliary belt setup is on this car. Literally, crank fully on top of it, that's it. And all the compressor and stuff on the other engine was like up here. So we're putting this pulley and this alternator on the other engine for weight savings, cost, race car. Four by four gearbox. This is the thing that makes the dream work. Uh, 
And this is the moment where we find out if it matches up with this. I'm pretty, I'm pretty hopeful to be fair. Drag the other box over, let's have a quick look. See if we can see anything obvious. Now we got two at the top. Looks. Two. Looks the same. Yes, it very much looks the same, doesn't it? As, yeah. we, as we suspected. Yeah. Thank God. Should be more complicated. I remember someone talking about this and being like, "Oh, the this is different or something." I don't know. It looks exactly the same to me. It does look exactly the same. Yeah. Just remember, we need to get that cam sensor, crank sensor timing right. Yeah. Make sure you take a note or line it up with the flat spot before you take the one off. Yeah. Okay, it's the end of today. Was this day three? One. Well, day three oh, overall. Day three, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so this is part three of the series. And this is it. This is a, a 1.4 litre 16 valve engine with a four wheel drive gearbox on it. And it fits and it works, as far as we know. Um, so, to anyone who doubts, it does fit. They do have the same valve housing. It works, yeah. you think. <laughs> and we do like this simplification. This is cool. Getting rid of the aircon. Um, so yeah, this is ready to go in. This is ready for the scrap heap. Uh, we're going to reuse the 4x4 radiator and fan and hoses because we think they match up. Um, we're going to reuse the 4x4 exhaust even though it's a little bit smaller than ideal, but for now it'll be fine. Uh, we've got 4x4 drive shafts that are going to go back onto the 4x4 gearbox. Uh, engine mounts are coming off of the 100, aren't they? Because they're yeah. different. Okay. So this, this engine mount here needs to be from the 100. This one will fit. This is the same. This is the gearbox mount, because obviously we're still using the same gearbox, so that will bolt straight back up again. And then the rear mount, which is here, again, it's going straight back onto the same gearbox, so so it will definitely go in for anyone that thinks it won't. Um, we've turned the engine over manually and it, it spins and it clears. Uh, it's got a new timing belt in it, I hope it got the timing right. We'll find out when we run it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not sure about that one. Yeah, it might not make 100 horsepower. <laughs> it might not even start, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But yeah, that's it for today. It's obviously getting a bit dark now, so we're going to go and have some dinner and some beers. Sounds uh, like a plan. And then first yeah. thing tomorrow morning, engine going in. Yeah. Good night, everyone. It's day three of the swap, part four of the video. I've just come out to uncover yesterday's work. This is where we got to yesterday. Engine's ready to go in. Today's problem is fuel lines. Um, the 1.2 fuel line is this one. And it goes into this side of the engine. On the 1.2, on the 1.4 it comes all the way along here and goes round here. So we need to make this longer somehow. So we're hoping there's enough bits on the other car that we can yeah. put something together. Uh, but that's our first problem. So if we can't find anything on the car to use, then we'll, uh, yeah. we'll have to go to the shop and uh, get that something. We'll take it straight off the other car. 
hopefully. Yep, hopefully. So, those two come apart here, and this one goes straight to there, so we could use all three off the other car. Maybe. We'll have a look at it. Cool. Hopefully that'll work. Might work. Updates to come. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't have filmed that because we needed all our hands, but it's in. All three mounts are bolted up. I have a concern. Back back, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what have we done? That was silly. Hmm. For anyone who hasn't guessed what the problem is, that is supposed to be in that hole there.
cool that it's actually it's actually happening now. I feel like it's real now. <laughs> okay. no, the engine is in the car. <laughs> We've only got the bit that we don't know about to finish the wiring. Will it actually work? Of course it will. It might be. If it, play, it should, but... If it doesn't, we're calling the AA to drag you home and I'm never going to see you again. <laughs> this, is, this is what Raymond's for, everyone. Did this start? Wherever you put them. Definitely on, yep. I guess while I'm down here, I can show the YouTubers the difference in the sump shape, can't I? So, this here on the 4x4 engine, the tunnel extended to like here, and this whole bit of metal here wasn't there. Um, and on the back of the engine there's a brace that goes from from the gearbox here up to the back of the engine there. Now we've left that off because this bit of sump is in the way but we think that the extra strength that brace was giving it is replaced by the fact that there's a lot more metal here attaching the gearbox. So we've left it off for now but there is room back there for bracing on the gearbox to the block if needed so we can always weld up something if needed okay we started on the wiring in the front uh we found a problem what's the problem james this is different the abs completely different so this is a 100 horsepower plug and that in there is the 4x4 socket for it and they don't match up so we are going to change the ABS unit for the one that's on the donor car. And this is why we bought the donor car, isn't it? <laughs> Rather yeah. than buying an engine, because shit like this. So, uh, yeah, that's an excellent job. We're probably going to have to bleed the brakes once it's done, because obviously we could disconnect the brake lines. And we don't know how difficult that's going to be. So. It's looking tired, yeah? Taking the seats out ready for interior strip, which is the next job. We need to take the dash out so we can get to all the wiring and get rid of the old loom, and then we need to feed the new loom back in through the scuttle and plug it into everything. So I think my next job is going to be to take the dash out. So I'll crack on with that now. James is out there fitting the OVS unit. I am in here taking the dash apart. Got lots of custom wiring in here, which is not been fun. Um, <coughs> leave that there. All right, for anyone wanting to put wires behind the dash for microphones or speakers or anything like that, uh, dab raid, uh, aerials or dash cams, anything like that, easiest place to put it is behind the clocks here I think. So there are four fixings on the shroud, two little torque screws there and then two there which you can easily get to, that just sits on there once that's off. We've got three bigger Torx bolts, one there, one there, and one there, and then the clocks come out and there's just one plug on the back. Get you one plug. You don't have to worry about resetting anything, it's just, it all comes out nice and easy, and then that gives you access. This is like the structural bar behind the dash. And then you've got a little bit of space here, so in that gap there, you can get to the head unit cavity. And then up here, you can get to the A-pillar and this trim will come out and you can go up there as well to hide wires 
and then obviously you can tuck in. Oh, there's the camera gone. There you, go. you can tuck in behind this trim. That's what I've done with my wires and my car. So it's really easy. If you want to hide things behind the dash. There is space behind the airbag as well, but it's a bit more involved getting all that out. So this is the easiest way of doing it. Another little sidebar for this video. Um, a lot of people say that the lights don't work on their instrument panel. Really easy to change, but people seem to ask questions about it all the time. Literally just... Where's my screwdriver? All you need to do is just get a screwdriver in there and that just pops out. It will just click. It takes a little bit of force, but not much. And it will just click out and that whole, whole switch gear will just fall out. And then, oh, that there is the bulb that lights the, the switches. And it just pulls out, it should do anyway. It means a little, like, if you eBay interior bulbs or something. There's one there as well. And you can even change the colour if you wanted to. You can put some green ones or blue ones or whatever you want in there. Or white ones. Um, but that's really easy. The dash is on its way out. Almost. I think it's just a couple of wires stuck. I think it's all the stuff in the middle. It's got to go back through a little hole, hasn't it? One dash. Oh. So now the fun bit begins. Yeah, all of that. Alright, this isn't going to make sense to a lot of people, but if you're doing this, you might want to see this. Uh, ignore this stuff, this is all this has all been added in. What we're looking at is the engine loom comes through the scuttle behind there, runs along the bulkhead and it comes up and it all terminates in these plugs here into the fuse box and the body commuter. So these are the ones you need to keep from donor car and this is what we're going to remove from this car. Everything else, oh that one as well, that brown one too. Everything else, these ones, these plugs here on the side, there's another plug just above it there. That always body loom, so that stays put. Uh, this clump here, if you can see, this is for the ignition. Uh, and the clocks and some other bits. That lamp stays in the car. Um, so we'll be joining that back onto the body computer. Uh, around this side you've got three plugs that go into the power steering thing. Um, they are with the engine loom. So they, they've been unplugged and they are now down here. So there's a blue plug, a black one and this white one. They're on the engine loom so they're going to come out. And then finally on this side you've got this weird plug here that goes into the centre of the dash. That is also part of the engine loom, so we've unplugged that, that's going to go up and that, that one there will be replaced by the one from the 100 horsepower loom. I think that's everything this side. On same the other again. side, <clears throat> yeah same again, so there's a collection of plugs down by that pillar there. Uh, but there's not as much over this side because obviously I haven't got the steering and the ignition and everything. So it's a bit more simple on that side. Well, we're basically going to pull this, which is the 1.2 engine loom. We're going to pull it through this way because we've already cut it at the scuttle up there. So right on the 100 horsepower, we fed all of this up and back out into the engine bay to keep it complete. So when we put the new one in, we're going to have to feed everything, all of these, this stuff, back in through the scuttle and then route it behind the steering column and then where it needs to go. So which ones over there need unplugging? Looks like everything attached to this thick one here. Uh, there's a few. I think I'm gonna have to start unplugging and see what what's attached to it and what isn't. Well, I remember you don't need to. I don't think this needs to come out, does it? I think so. No, I don't think that's engine loom. 
because this is all part of this ignition bollocks up here that's all staying put. So I don't think you need to, I don't think this is what you need to follow. You need to look at where it's coming down from the back and this stuff. Because those, these ones match the stuff that I've left behind on this side. Okay. So I don't think they need to go. I think this is all staying. Let's get this sponge out. Don't need sponge. See a bit better then. Yeah, so that, that little bit at the back, that's what's coming out of the scuttle, that's what we need. D4 on Ben's driveway. Um, James was working hard last night while I was out, and all of the wiring is plugged in. We've had to solder a couple of things up today, like the ABS, which we had to cut out the other car. Uh, sorry, I've got a sniff. Uh, we had to change the heater plug, which is this one here. So it wasn't long enough from the 100 HP and um, the wires were slightly differently, so we've had to change that for the old plug. Uh, what are we doing now? We're... I accidentally cut the wire for the side repeater yesterday, so we need to solder that up. But other than that, I think the wiring's done for now. So we are just going to reassemble the uh, everything we need to start the car and see if it if it if it turns over or if it runs. So we'll be back in a minute with hopefully a running engine. Important work going on. Swapping out the transponder. I guess this is for the immobilizer, is that? Yeah, yeah, just the immobiliser really. Almost got this one. Oh god. Audio on this video is just really sniffing for three hours. This key does not want to be taken apart. You don't have to hold the spring on that one, do you? Um, there we go. Let me just put this one back together. Oh my god, my hand's cramped. <laughs> Probably a much easier way of doing this, but if it works. Okay, got it. Perfect. Done. That's our key. It's battery time. So we remember which it is. is going on, we're just doing the earth straps. Right, if you get inside the car, I'll hold it on the terminal just for a little bit and just, just look for smoke, just make sure nothing's shorting anywhere or yep. catching fire. I'll stay out here. Boxer on. 
I'll put a dish on and then connect. No, no, have a good look around, make sure nothing's smoking first, because we've, we've plugged a lot of things in that might not be in the right place, so... And it will take a minute or two for it to be obvious if anything's on fire. I say, nothing will be powered yet though, will it? With ignition off. Well, there's going to be permanent lights in there somewhere for different things. So the clocks came on and stuff, so... Yeah. Right, ignition on. Ooh. Wipers. That's alright, it was just the wipers. <laughs> that was scary. Okay, do you want to plug your laptop in now? Yeah, I think brake fluid and immobiliser. I don't know if it's going to start with the immobiliser light on. Uh, bad failure. Yeah. yeah. We know that. I feel quite nervous right now. I don't think we're going to get anything with the, um, the immobiliser light on, but we swapped the ECU, the body computer, the clocks, mm. and the that, so it should be. What have I done? Have we missed an F somewhere for the body computer or the ECU? This has got to be. You have to choose the, the engine and everything. There's only 1.416 valve. It's only that one, so it must be that. Yeah, I'm not saying the software's wrong. I'm saying, like, if we missed an earth on the car, that means that something's not on somewhere. So, should we just try to start it? <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't think anything will happen. Well, no. It wouldn't matter anyway, really. Mobilize it. Right. I wasn't recording any of that, what an idiot. Oh, This battery's sounding a little bit. We got a fresh one in there, it's fine. Just, just run it flat and then we'll put another one in. <laughs> it sounds like it's blowing bubbles. The good news is there's smoke coming out of all four holes. Okay, now I'm thinking something's not right. There should be fuel now, shouldn't there? Yeah. Should we um take the fuel hose off and see if it's wet? Yeah. Um. Is it, is it actually firing now, or is it? Go on then. It does, but it's just, you would have expected it to go by now, wouldn't you? That's the best it's been. Battery's almost dead.
look at. We have finished our celebratory beers. Uh, the wiring is all in. We've just checked the lights and all the lights work. Um, everything else that we can check at this point is working, uh, electrical wise. So now we're going to put the dash back in. We've just got to secure all of this, uh, this loom that we've put through. We're going to secure that so it's not vibrating against anything. Um, and James is just putting that big plug in through the scuttle. Uh, yeah, and then we need to wait for tomorrow for the shops to be open for some heater hose so we can finish off the cooling system. Uh, we've just done an oil change, so it's got fresh oil in it, a new filter. Uh, we're going to leave the spark plugs until it's run smoothly for a little bit, just to clear everything out, and then we'll put the fresh spark plugs in. Uh, the manifold needs to go on next. Yeah. Uh, but we don't have a gasket for it. So are we going to wait for tomorrow for that, or are we just going to put it on without one and then refit it again at another I think, time? Yeah, I can set it for it. Get it welded up and then it can just come off and go back on, can't it? Well, I don't know how difficult the manifold is to get off once the front's in. It's all quite close to the radiator, isn't yeah. it? Mm, I'm not sure. Gonna have to think about that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that might be a today job, it might be a tomorrow job. But, um, uh, yeah, so the dash is going back in now. So next time you see this, it will look more like a car again. And that should be the interior done. And then it's just a case of, uh, I've got the prop shaft to put back on as well. Yeah. Once the prop shaft is on, it'll be mechanically ready. Yeah. Obviously get the wheels back on. Um, yeah, then it's just the front end to build, but we can't really do that until we've got a heater hose so we can rebuild the cooling system. We can put the radiator on, I think, and still get to where we need to go. It's this bit down here from the, from the thermostat to the heater matrix that we need a new pipe for because it's the two the two engines aren't compatible really so I'm gonna make something new. Um, other than that it's just putting it all back together really and then it will drive away. Yeah. At greater speed than it did before. A little bit faster. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be fast. For anyone thinking this is gonna be a fast car, it won't be a fast car, it'll be it will be an acceptable amount of power rather than massively underpowered like the previous engine was. Uh, the only other big job is the brakes. Um, obviously we took the ABS, is it a pump or a? ABS pump, yeah. Yeah, so we took that off and replaced it with a 100 horsepower one. Obviously lost a lot of fluid in the process. So we need to refill the brake fluid and then there might be some... We have a problem with that as well. What's the problem? My caliper. The uh, bleed bit was shaved off. So. Ah, so bleeding will be a problem. That's so, what it would have been. So, you know, we said about should we do the caliper while it's in this state? We are doing the caliper. We are doing the caliper while it's in this state. <laughs> um, so, that means we need to drag that that donor back up. up I think we'll have to do that last. Back up here and take the. Um, we can do that caliper, can't we? Yeah. So, that's going to be another job. That's going to be a tomorrow job, I think. Yeah. Replacing a brake caliper. And then we might have to take it to a shop to get them to bleed the brakes because James seems to think that you might need software to do a full um, as as fluid know, change on an ABS system. So in the ABS pump. So. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. So, and obviously we're getting lots of ABS faults on the on the dash at the moment because of that. So hopefully that'll all get cleared up yeah. with a good bleed. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's good to go. I think. Yeah. We still haven't tightened the engine mounts down. We need to do that before oh, we forget. All the engine mounts, yeah. Yeah, they all need tightening down. All these. So yeah. I don't, um, I don't know if you. I don't know how tight you did the one at the back. Uh, but it might be worth putting a breaker on that and just getting it super tight. Oh, the. The, the rear one. Rear mount. Yeah. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, I've done that one. Okay. Yeah, it's just. The three on the gearbox mount, the one on the side as well. I haven't, I haven't taught those down yet either. So, so yeah, here it is. Hello again, everyone. We have a dash again. Now uh, we have to do some modifications to the wiring from the 
the previous owner. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> um, but no, it's um, yeah, it's all back in, I think. Uh, we, I think I said we tested the lights and everything that all worked. Yeah, that's all good. Hopefully the windows and the heaters and everything all work. That's something we haven't tested yet, which may not work because we changed the plug. So maybe we should do that now. Should we do that on camera? What's that? The do you want to turn the ignition on and try the blowers and the heaters? Give that a go, yeah. Yeah, that, that one was different. So. No, we haven't got the battery on at the moment. No. Get that hooked up again. So we'll, we'll test that in a second. Um, what's next? I think we're back on the outside of the car next. Get the scuttle back in, get the wipers back on. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to have a welder sometime this afternoon so we can sort the exhaust out. Because um, we can put the manifold on now, the new filter's on, because that was the only thing. That was in the way, but that's a new one there, so. Uh, oh, James has put the clutch slave back on and all the linkages. So that's all the gearbox is now finished. Um, so yeah, we're kind of almost getting to the point where we need to finish for the day really, aren't we? Because we need that coolant hose. Yeah, what about the... Uh Exhaust, did you hear that? No, I'll give him another call and see if he's coming today. He might come tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we might as well just finish off the interior today then. Get it all ready and then um, it's just end of tomorrow. Oh, the prop. Prop. Yeah, we can do that tonight as well. Can't yeah. We? yeah, we can put the prop back on. And then we can go and celebrate with dinner. Sounds good. So, yeah, unless. Unless I don't do another update, uh, that'll be it for today, I think, for the video. So we'll see you all tomorrow for the finished product, hopefully. And a smoothly running, powerful piece of Italian artistry. Alright, good morning everyone. We are back again. Uh, today's exhaust day. So, we cleaned up this face. The old gasket's still on there at the moment because we're struggling to get a new one, so we think we might just leave that on for the moment as a temporary measure and then get the manifold off again at a later date and put a new gasket on it to see if any leaks. Yeah. We've chopped the, the manifold off of the 100 exhaust and tidied this end up, ready for welding. Luckily, this pipe's I think this is two inch on the 100, and we've got like inch and three quarters maybe. Um, so that one fits inside this one really nicely. So we've made like a little slip joint. This is the old exhaust that we've sort of shaped to, to sit there. So the other one will slip over the top and then we'll just tack it in and hopefully seal it up. And it'll do for now. <laughs> it's a little bit too small, but it will get the car driving. <laughs> um, and then I'm sure James will get a custom job done at some point when yeah. cap back.
That is a tack. That's better. I'll get one on the other side and it should just be enough. I really can't wait to ignore all the all the comments from from professional welders <laughs> telling us how bad they are. There's no need, people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that I'm actually getting blobs and sort of squatting now, but it's going to need grinding down and redoing. Maybe this is a good sponsorship opportunity. We can say if there's any welders out there that want to sponsor the channel and do our welding for us, so yeah. that you don't have to watch this, then. Uh, or just give us a free welding mask. That'd be good. Yeah, all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we can bring high quality wells to you. Higher. Oh, Higher, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe it wasn't clean enough. Maybe I didn't take it down to bear that enough. Oh, I forgot to mention we changed. Well, James changed the brake caliper this morning, so we now have a bleed nipple. Um, so when we bleed the brakes, we can actually do it properly. Uh, we've also found on the multi ECU software um, a guide to bleeding with ABS. So we should be able to do it um, using our own laptop and opening the valves that way. So hopefully we won't need to take it to a garage to do it. It's starting to look like a car again. So we've got the exhaust on, we still haven't tacked that bracket to support it underneath, but the exhaust is on. Um, we can do that bracket in a second. Uh, the radiator is thumbed up. We had to slightly modify this hose because it was a different, slightly different length and there was a kink in it when we put it on, so we shortened it a little bit and then heavily clipped it. The thermostat hose. That's it. That one. That fits, 1.2 and 1.4, it's the same one. Um, Ready, it is on. We have found an extra plug that we don't know what it's for. Can't work out whether it was 4 and 100 either. Um, so if anyone knows what that is, then let us know. This is obviously fog light, so don't tell us it's fog light, because it's not. Um, yeah, it's down here at the bottom of the radiator, it wants to be for some reason. Uh, we already tested the lights yesterday, so we know they're all working. Um, just going to rattle these. I didn't go in straight. <laughs> Fourth wheel on and tack that exhaust bracket on so it's not going to vibrate and break those top quality welds you did. Exactly. And then we're done, I think. Yeah. Coolant in, lead the brakes. Yes, bleed the brakes. I'll leave that front one off for now. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, we need to get to the bleed nipples on all of them, won't we? Yeah, the so. rear you can do the wheels on that plate. Okay, so I might have to take that one off again. Take that one off. Um, yeah, so brake bleeding is probably the next job because that's the next thing it needs to be roadworthy. And then we've got the rest of the day to tidy up and uh, take it for a quick test drive. I'm going to follow James in this for a little test drive just to make sure nothing blows up. And if it does blow up, then we've got tools on us to try and fix it and maybe tow him home if needed. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty much there, so 
so I'll update you in a little bit when when it's finished and we're starting it up properly with coolant for the first time and we can rev it and see if it runs and see if it gets up to temperature and all that sort of stuff. I think we'll plug the laptop in again to make sure there's no more faults now we've got everything plugged in. Yeah. Okay, so we've just filled it up with coolant. We squeezed the pipes a bit to get some of the air out, but we're just about to run it to try and bleed the system a bit more. Obviously all of that came out of it, so all of it's got to go back in. Again, before anyone moans at us in the comments, I did tell James to replace it, but he's, he's into his recycling, so we're using the old coolant. This isn't a high budget build, is it? <laughs> this is get an engine and then use whatever we have here right now to get it working. <laughs> and at the moment we have a bucket of coolant, so that's what we're using. So this will be its second start, so the only time it's run is the time that you would have already seen in the previous video. Uh, so now it's got an exhaust and lambda sensors on, and everything else plugged in, and it's got coolant. It's still not got, it's got no, a bit of coolant. Still got no brakes. It's got brake fluid in in the reservoir, so yeah. it might do a bit of self bleeding once everything's open. Um, but here we go. Got headlights. That's a good start. <laughs> What was that? That noise? I have yeah. no idea. Is that the, um, do you reckon that's the, the water pump going without any water in it? I don't think so, because it wouldn't be against anything. Yeah, but if it's got no resistance, it's just going to spin really quickly and make a whirring noise, isn't it? Hard to say. It's got water in there, hasn't it? Yeah, but there might have been an airlock in there that was, I don't know if this went down at all. Yeah. yeah, it's dropped massively. What's up though? It's low, but I don't think it's that low. The, the water... Oh no, it hasn't dropped. Has it not? Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. It hasn't dropped at all. Um. Hmm. Any leaks? No leaks. That noise is concerning. Yeah. Well, we haven't done nothing to that, that's why. <laughs> yeah, but. Should be good. Uh, oil? Double check it, but. Yeah. That was fresh. And it was up to maximum. Yeah, it's plenty. What do you want to do? Run it? See if it quiets down? Not much. To me, that sounded a lot like uh, a pump going with no resistance. I may be wrong, but... Alternator too tight? Maybe. It's not that tight, is it? Um, run it again, because it sounded like it was getting louder as well, that's, what, that's why I told you to turn it off. Um, something, something. It didn't sound like, it, did, it, it, it didn't sound metallic. Run it again. Run it again, I'll see if I can locate the noise. That sounds good. It's definitely on that side of the engine. Yeah. Shall we um, take the alternator belt off just to, to you know make sure that's not a problem? Say so it ran before we put it in, and it didn't make that noise. Yes. And we changed this. So we had the alternator on then, didn't we? Different. We had an alternator, which is fucked. Oh. But it didn't make that noise. 
this alternator is known to work, so I don't think it's that. No, but this ran without making that noise when it was when all this was on. I mean, it was only for a couple of seconds. It might have been drowned out by not having an exhaust on it. Maybe. Mm. What would make that noise though? Like, think about what's going on in there and what would make that noise. Because it, it doesn't. It's not. It's not anything in the head, is it? It doesn't sound like yeah. valves hitting or anything. So even as the time is out, I don't see why it would make that noise. Yeah. Unless we got the tension wrong, maybe. I don't think so. It's self-tensioning anyway. I think it was right. Um, Do you want to send the video to me? See what it's like. Yeah. Okay. YouTube, we'll be right back. We're going to discuss with the experts, <laughs> our UK Panda 4x4 friends, and we'll be right back. Welcome back everybody, uh, we have fed the brakes, it turns out we didn't need any suffer or anything, um, got a nice firm pedal now, it was going right to the floor when we fitted the new caliper and the ABS unit, but feels like we've got all the air out of the system now, um, yeah nice and firm, we've done all four wheels and there was air and froth and all sorts in, in all four. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to change the plug on the radiator fan Yep So that we actually have a fan Because the two plugs were different So that's something else If anyone's keeping a track of what you need to change to do this swap um, the, This is the radiator fan from the 100 And then it needs to go in there And it doesn't So we need to chop these two wires and put the other plug on um, Yeah, we had it running for what, 10 minutes earlier? 10 minutes, yeah. And uh, had a bit of smoke because there's a lot of WD 40 on here where we were undoing the exhaust manifold bolts, but once that's all burnt off, it'll be good. Um, oh, we had a leak, didn't we? No, we didn't. No, it was, just, it was just dripping. So we haven't had any leaks from any of the radiator hoses. We think we got a lot of the air out of the system, but I'm sure a quick, uh, a quick drive will. Uh, <coughs> We'll get the rest out, if there is any. Um, so yeah, other than that, bumpers and we're done, I think. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, I think we can get them on, can't we? Yeah. Get Should we on. get that rear bumper off of the off of the black one? Um, I think I'll just put mine back on for now. Okay. I think we need another day, don't we, to do spoiler tailgate and bumpers yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously take as much as you can. <laughs> But, um, yeah, you might have to leave. Uh, mind you, if you're putting your old bumpers back on, that's two bits of scrap that you're taking with you. And then I'll just keep that, um, unless you want to put this one now. Um, just the grills. Yes! Excellent. Okay, so we are five minutes into our first drive and the car got very hot very quickly. Um, so I think we've just released our humongous airlock um, because the reservoir has now gone to, looks like there's nothing in there. So we're now refilling it. And hopefully, like with the airlock gone, it might have just been when the thermostat opened, it just, just increased the capacity so much that Place. The heat is still blowing cold, uh, so there's no there's no water in the heating matrix. All right. Annoyingly, we've still got all this goo all over the exhaust manifold, so it's difficult to tell where the smoke or steam is coming from. Oh, it's gone! It's gone! Bit better, that boy.
don't have to give it a little rev tube anymore. Oh. Yeah, you know, we'll just drop. Yeah, you just lost a load more. Just make sure you're not overfilling it because eventually it's not going to go down anymore. So just keep going up to the max line, I think. I can see it bubbling in there. Where are we? So rev it again, see how far it goes down. Because it definitely dropped when you rev. Yeah. Yeah, it's dropped a little bit. I think the heater matrix might have been empty. Yeah. Because the thermostat wasn't open. Because it's fed off the thermostat, isn't it? The heater matrix. I think so, yeah. So I reckon when the thermostat closed, it wasn't getting anything into the heat matrix, and we just filled it up. Okay, that'll do. Throw that again. bubbles now. We still don't have fan though. No, that's concerning. Yeah. I'm sure I connect it properly. Let's have a look at this again. That didn't drop the last time you read them. little bit of warm air but it's not much. I think there's still a massive airlock somewhere. Well the temperature gauge is right now. Do you want to continue on to the industrial state so we can do some driving? Well it's getting warmer. It's getting hot now. Or the air or the Yeah the air. Dropped. Well, it might have just been that, like stick your cap back on and leave it idling, you might as well leave it on. Yeah, if we continue to the industrial state we can you can drive and stop at, your, at will then, can't you? Yeah. Okay. And just keep monitoring everything. Again. Smoke as well. well. It seems to be dying down now. Fans a bit normally, but... Yeah. Alright, carry on. Okay, again, just flash and we'll stop. Yeah. Uh, test drive two. Um, got a little bit hot again, but the fluid didn't drop as much, so we've just topped up again. We're just going to do a couple of runs up and down the road on this industrial state. To uh, keep... We've estimated there's about 200 kilos in the back of that car, if anyone's wondering why it's sagging so much. <laughs> it makes nice noises. It sounds awesome. It sounds really awesome. I don't know if the camera's picked it up, but it sounds cool. 
It's got a standard 4x4 exhaust on there, but it's got a, a pod filter on the front. Because we couldn't fit the standard air box because uh, our modified fuel line is in the way. It sounds really cool. Sound but the outside, it sounds awesome. <laughs> Got really, it doesn't sound like exhaust noise at all because it isn't, it just sounds all intake. It's great. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> when I put the brake on, I just felt the back of my seat go. Yeah. Yeah, don't brake too hard. Is the brakes working okay? Uh, they're very soft. Yeah. I'll get them glad to properly tomorrow. Again, the smoke is from the goo on the exhaust. We're going to have to clean that off at some point. Um, torch is in the driver's seat if you want to check the level again. So we are just keep checking the coolant level because it keeps dropping every time we're driving it. So a good thing. There you go, you can see the level. Yeah. Okay, I think a few more runs just... <laughs> Yeah. We'll just keep doing this until we're happy, I think, and then you'll have to just be very wary of it on the way home and just yeah. keep building up, like, what you're doing with it. I went to about four and a half. It sounded great, yeah. though. It sounded really cool. Can't wait till you get it on, like, at the yeah. top end. I know. Is that what mine sounds like from the outside? I guess you don't know, do you? I heard it, no. I think it's mine's all exhaust noise, because I've got that stupid bodged exhaust on it, so... It's probably drowning out the intake noise. Mm. Give it a minute. It looks cool as well. It squats down at the back with all the weight in it. <laughs> it looks like it's got more power than it has. I take it all the gears are working fine. You've not got any noises from the drivetrain nope. or anything. The clutch is weird, but that's just a new clutch, isn't it? It's yeah. like really low. It'll need bedding in a little bit, yeah. won't it? So. Cool. Okay, a couple more runs. Go on. Yeah. I'm going to have to give you my... Going for it. <laughs> Easy. 